Commission, would the clerk call the roll, please? Mayor Mars? Here. Commissioner Devine? Here. Commissioner Joka? Here. Commissioner Perney? Here. Commissioner Veneer? Here. Would you all please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is a citizen's forum, a time set aside for any citizen that would like to address the commission on any item that is not on our agenda today. Are there any citizens that would like to address the commission? Seeing none, we'll move on to awards and proclamations, which we have none today. The next item then would be public hearings and items scheduled for a certain time. Item 5.1, public hearing on petition number 4293, requesting a vacation of a 30 foot of platted access along the west side of lot two, block one in the Schilling subdivision number seven. Sub item 5.1A, first reading ordinance number 07, 10,382. Staff report, Mr. Andrews. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor and Commissioners, this is a petition that was filed uh, by the uh, representatives of Citywide Self Storage. It is a mini storage business. It's located on the east side of Centennial Road, south of Magnolia. And we provided you with a little bit of background that um, back in 1998, uh, the airport authority went through a very uh, comprehensive replatting of uh, much of the property out in that airport industrial area and uh, they also worked with uh, private landowners and uh, to clean up items that were left over from the 1966 plat that was prepared by the federal government. Um, the particular area that we're talking about today is known as Schilling Subdivision Number 7 and at the time it was uh, platted it covered 32 acres and contained four lots. Um, at the time it was looked at, uh, there were no internal private or public streets, but there was a 60-foot private access easement that was owned by the airport authority, and it was the means for providing access east of uh, Centennial Road. And that roadway essentially serves citywide self-storage, Blix Fertilizer, uh, Smoky Hill Construction, and at the south end, builder's choice concrete. It is not a private street, but essentially serves as a, as a side street for that area. Um, the city's development review team has had some discussions with the owners out there about constructing additional buildings and making other improvements to their mini storage complex. And the issue of access to Centennial Road uh, came up as a result of those discussions. This petition was filed and uh, at the time of the plat there was restricted access which meant no individual driveways and this request is to break that access control to allow a 30-foot driveway to be constructed on uh, to Centennial Road. Um, the rationale for getting restricted access on the plat is to try to minimize the number of curb cuts on our major arterial streets and thus reduce the turning points and number of places of conflict with vehicles. Where possible, we've gotten restricted access on arterial streets where side street access is available. And you'll see that pattern on most of the newer arterial street sections in the community. Um, the, uh, back in 98, as we noted, the access was restricted because there are three uh, gated openings that provide access into the mini storage complex from the private drive to the south. Um, in response to this petition, the engineering department had expressed concern about the proximity to this driveway to the existing uh, access easement. Uh, but this lot has very narrow frontage on Centennial Road and there's, because of the ditch, there's really no other place to put it and get it any farther away. Um, there should be no impact on the city of Salina financially if this is approved. 
uh, the developer's contractor would be responsible for constructing a driveway as well as a culvert over a drainage swale uh, to city standards. Um, it's our recommendation that the uh, ordinance allowing the vacation of platted restricted access, if approved, contain the following condition <laughs> and that the final design plans for that driveway approach and culvert and the culvert sizing um, be approved by the city engineer prior to construction of the driveway. Uh, with that, I'd be welcome to take any questions or um, we can refer questions to the city engineer as well. Questions of staff? Um, my question is about this comment here in the middle. Uh, the engineering department has expressed concern about the proximity of the proposed driveway to the existing access easement given the speed limit on Centennial Road. Um, does that imply a recommendation one way or the other? Or? Well, those comments came from the engineering department staff and were forwarded to me and reflected in the report. I would allow them to expand on that if you wish, but certainly given the amount of frontage there, ideally you wouldn't have two openings that close together. But the, the counter point to that is that currently the property has no driveways of their own on Centennial Road. I guess what they're saying is ideally you would not have a second curb cut opening as close to that uh, private drive opening as what is proposed here. But yeah. As you can see from that the is the big question. So they don't use that. Uh, commissioners, if it uh, uh, would help uh, clarify this, Carlton Place, our city engineer is here, and maybe he could uh, help clarify that question a little bit. Yeah, Mayor and Commissioners, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that that what Dean just said is my concern there also that that uh, the proximity of that entrance uh, to the existing one that is already there um, they do seem to have um, three access points off of the uh, easement road there and, and I'm just concerned with um, some traffic safety issues uh, along Centennial uh, with the speed limit that's there and the proximity of both entrances um, with what what he said, um, I also believe that that uh, it's logical that since they do not have um, their own access point off of Centennial, uh, that's kind of the only real reason why um, I believe it's feasible. Um, as far as traffic wise, it's it's really not the uh, ideal situation. Who owns the, the access drive that they currently are using to serve their storage Army. facility? Who owns the access drive that they currently? Uh, it's the, the airport. Uh, I believe it, yeah, it's the airport. Um, it's the here. Do we have any idea what kind of traffic generation this present access road generates? No, not that I know of. Does, do we know that if most of the traffic to the other facilities behind the subject site primarily use the entrance off Magnolia Road or is this access ro is, it, is there a possibility that we could close this access road and just provide one access to the storage facility is what I'm asking. I am unsure of that. I don't know if Mr. Andrews has any other. The, if you can look at the aerial photo, the primary entrance into the Smoky Hill construction yard is from Magnolia Road. They do use this driveway as well as the driveway to the south uh, where Builder's Choice is. The, the road is there primarily to serve uh, the Blix fertilizer operation, um, which could be served from either of those two driveways. But the, um, the existing paved access drive is um, asphalt and is fairly substantial and is in pretty good shape. Uh, that serves the gates to the mini storage facility today. But the point that you made, Dean, in your presentation was that this is a platted lot without access to a public uh, road. 
the, the entire frontage is restricted, yes, with the idea that the access is from the private drive, which serves, in this case, like a side street. But that is actually that Blick fertilizer uh, bulk storage area's access to that public right of way. Correct. And so, you know, from a from a technical standpoint, uh, this uh, if this were being platted today, this lot or being developed today, this lot would have to gain access from Centennial from this point. There's no other point that it can gain access, and it is a platted lot. Well, in 1998, when the plat was looked at, the access to this lot was determined to be from that private drive, the side street, and that's why the access was restricted on Centennial, because it had access from the side street on the south. But that is only, is that by, through any written agreement, or is it just, no. just because? It is, not, it is not through any written agreement, it's no. that the airport authority has allowed all the users within that Schilling subdivision number seven to use that, but it is not by any kind of formal agreement or covenant. Right. It's another one of those those private roads that we have that serves more than one property that by doing this, we could somewhat eliminate that whole issue as well. That right. could be part of what their rationale f was for requesting this driveway. It would be theirs and under their control. Okay, any other questions of staff before we open the public hearing? Do we know what kind of traffic generation the storage facility I do not. experiences? Why don't we open the public hearing, let public comment, and then ask some additional questions. So I will open the public hearing on this petition, 4293. Is there anyone from the public that would like to address the commission? Please give us your name and address. I don't know that I would be uh, known as public here. I'm the spokesman for Citywide Storage. Um, at the time that we purchased Citywide, uh, I'm Larry Triplett, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. At the time we purchased that, that location, access was by that same street, and we were allowed by the airport authority to gate that road which we did and that was our access and there was no other access there um, there was a request by one of the people and I don't remember which one it was from behind to also use that access so our gate was moved to the rear of the property uh, but there is a gate back on the at the construction company which stays closed almost all the time it's only at certain times when they want to use that access road that they even open the gate. So that you were asking about. Could you point that out on this map, please, Larry? I'm sure they show, but I guess I'll just stay up here if it's okay. This is the access road right here. This is the access road. Right. It's to the south of the complex. We originally had it gated across there, had a fence down through there. In fact, these trees that are on this property are trees that we planted because we just kind of took it as our own situation and, and kept that road and, and did all the maintenance and everything until there was a request by the construction company, I believe. Uh, and, but there's a gate that sits right here, and it's closed about 90% of the time. A gate right back here at the end. So there's no traffic other than ours. <coughs> you. Is that enough for everybody? Um, as far as traffic and traffic into many storage, that's also minimal. We probably have a dozen customers throughout the day that access that storage on, on a daily basis uh, because they run businesses out of them. Uh, but I doubt that you would exceed 25 cars, 25 vehicles in and out of there in any one day. And I doubt that the average vehicle count on the road that, uh, that we used to use or do now for access, I doubt that you would find an average of two vehicles. So you're somewhere in the 25, 30 vehicles at the outside. 
in the total in, in the total traffic for the complex and the road. Uh, by allowing this access, and we're built backwards today because our access is to the rear of the storage, and we have outside storage that's right out next to Centennial. Uh, it, it is our intent to put a new frontage on that uh, to remove the outside storage. Uh, this is going to take some time because this all has to be worked out, but that's the intent is to remove the outside storage, put a good looking entrance on the front so that it's more appealing to the public. And I think from uh, asset appeal, um, it's going to be considerably better if you grant, grant this situation. As far as turning off of Centennial into, into the complex, there will be, I would say, almost zero competition between the two driveways because there's none on the other one if we remove ours. Mm -hmm. And I stand open for questions if you have them. So you, Go ahead. so you don't really need four entrances, which as is proposed right now, you'd keep the three on the side road plus the new access from Centennial. We do have, uh, on occasion, semis that want to get in there. And with the semis, we will probably still exit on the road with those semis, but it will not be a typical uh, driveway pattern. What I'm trying to get at, Larry, is I'm concerned about the, the close the proximity of the proposed entrance with the existing roadway. And if we close the existing roadway, you you know, and vacate that, I want I wondered if that would impact any of the other traffic for the properties behind your facility as well as yours. That's what I'm trying to yeah, if you vacated the road, I am sure that the construction company, because of uh, of equipment that they bring in and out of there, they're the ones that open the gate. So I think if there is somebody that uses that road, that would be it. I think once in a while the concrete trucks come down through there. But they'd have to get the construction company to open the gate because the gate's closed. How, how does the construction company block it off from the Magnolia Drive that appears to come through here from the north? Is that? Right at the rear of our property. Even with the rear of our property, there's a gate that's in place that is closed about 98% of the time. There is no traffic goes through there. On an average day, there is no traffic goes through there. On, on occasions, our, that gate gets opened up and there is some traffic, but it is of no consequence whatsoever. Okay. Thank you. Good Commissioner, questions. just a, a thought on this. The, the, the gate that he's talking about that the concrete company closes is on the private easement of the airport authority. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Andrew uh, a question, and if, if we don't know the answer to this, we might recommend that you defer the, or postpone this a week to check that. But, Dean, do you, do you know the, uh, have you looked at the actual easement, uh, private easement documents from the airport authority to, uh, it, it looks obvious that the intent is to provide access to the adjacent businesses, but there's a real question as far as uh, permanent access to properties on here that I think is the question the commissioners are asking. Do we know if that's the intent of that or if it's written in the easement? The intent is that, but as the the mayor observed in many of these roadways out there, it is a f informal arrangement or an understanding. We don't have in front of us any document that is a formal arrangement that actually grants those rights to those owners. I think that would be the question: whether is there a formal arrangement amongst those owners, or is it informal? Uh, with the airport authority. Have we reviewed the actual easement document to see if it provides any language relating to the intended use of that private access easement? We don't know that there is a separate easement document because the okay. easement was provided on the plat. Okay, I see. And so the whether there's a separate written arrangement between all those owners, that would have to be researched. Okay. I'm aware of no document whatsoever allowing us easement to that. Now, you, Dean, you said it's on the plat? It's on the plat as an access mm -hmm. easement. We have no documentation. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comments? <coughs> I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission.
it's my opinion that this, um, if we're, we're trying to move forward and to treat these properties the way they should be treated, that this property should have access off of Centennial. Um, the platted access that comes in on lot number four uh, that is shown um, obviously is there on the plat. Mm -hmm. But I don't have any problem seeing that I, I think lot two needs to have its own access. Well, I agree with uh, Mayor's comments, and uh, it looks like there's a lot of potential for future replatting of uh, especially the big lot four and probably the big lot three at some point in time, at which time it would be good if uh, if this particular lot already had its own access. So uh, I would move that uh, ordinance number 07-10382 be approved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve ordinance 07-10382. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Mayor Mars, I would like to also direct the staff to begin an inquiry because it may be that these uses will not be here forever and I think that the, the way to address the traffic concerns and the platting issues and all of that needs to be a proactive approach, not an after-the-fact approach. But I think, and to go along with your comment, I think lot number four, if it is replatted, its access then point could be moved for far enough south to where there wouldn't be a conflict between the two. Which would exactly, be but I thing. think that that would that should be done beforehand, not after the fact. Okay. Next item is consent agenda. Item six point one: approve the minutes of March nineteenth, two thousand seven. Item 6.2, resolution number 076376, appointing Sharon Luca to the Accessibility Advisory Board, Brian Schmidt to the Library Board, and Les Appleby to the Planning Commission. Item 6.3, resolution number 076377, authorizing an agreement with Sunflower Insurance Group Incorporated to provide insurance broker services. Item 6.4, resolution number 076378, authorizing a farm lease agreement with Gary and David Olson. Are there any items that any commissioner would like to have pulled from the consent agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve? Mayor Mars, I would move for approval of the consent agenda. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next item is development business, which we have none. Next item then is item 8, which is administration. Item 8.1, second reading ordinance number 07-10378, vacating the North 3rd Street right-of-way from Iron Avenue to the Smoky Hill River. This ordinance was passed on first reading on March 19th, 2007, and since that time, no comments have been received. Mayor Mars, I move approval on second reading of ordinance number 07-10378. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve on second reading ordinance 0710378. Would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Devine? Aye. Commissioner Joka? Aye. Commissioner Perney? Aye. Commissioner Veneer? Aye. Mayor Mars? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Next item. Item 8.2, second reading ordinance number 071381, authorizing the issuance of industrial revenue bond series 2007 CASA industrial controls. This ordinance was passed on first reading on March 19th, 2007, and since that time, no comments have been received. Mayor Mars, I'd move for approval of ordinance 0710381 on second reading. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve ordinance 0710381 on second reading. Would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Devine? Aye. Commissioner Joka? Aye. Commissioner Perney? Aye. Commissioner Veneer? Aye. Mayor Mars? Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Next item. Item 8.3, second reading ordinance number 07-10380, amending section 4259 of the Salina Code by adding temporary quarters for emergency service providers and responders as a permitted term temporary use. This ordinance was passed on first reading on March 19th, 2007, and since that time, no comments have been received. Mayor Mars, I move adoption of ordinance 07-10380 on second reading. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt ordinance zero, uh, 0710380 on second reading. Would the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Devine? Aye. Commissioner Jilka? Aye. Commissioner Perney? Aye. Commissioner Veneer? Aye. Mayor Mars? Aye. 
Motion carries 5-0. Next item. Item 8.4, extension of the 2006-2007 Landfill Professional Engineering Services contract with Camp Dresser and McKee Incorporated. Staff report, Mr. Frazier. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, in order to comply with numerous EPA and KDHE regulations pertaining to the operation of a landfill, we require uh, certain engineering services to be conducted each year. In the past, the city has uh, contracted out many of these landfill engineering services to our consulting engineering firm with solid waste experience. Although all tasks are normally completed by the end of the contract period, occasionally, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, a contract will need to be extended to complete all of the tasks. Two task amendments under the 0607 Annual Engineering Services contract with CDM fall into this category and have yet to be completed. By extending the current contract to September 30th, 2007, adequate time would be available to complete these tasks. Um, the first is task seven, solid waste composting consulting. Work is about finished on the feasibility section of the report. A planned study session in April will provide uh, several options for the city to consider. Uh, after direction from the city commission, the rest of the report will be completed. At this time, no money has been expended of the $36,500 task. Uh, an extension of task eight, supplemental groundwater investigation is also required due to weather delays and subcontractor availability. This task has not yet been completed. Uh, once the data gathering has been uh, compiled, a report on the findings will be presented to the city commission. At this time, uh, no dollars have been expended on this task. Uh, no um, additional funds will be required to complete these two tasks beyond the amounts approved in this year's contract, sufficient funds are available in the 2007 solid waste budget to pay for these expenses. Staff recommends the City Commission approve the attached agreement authorizing the extension of 0607 annual landfill services contract with CDM in order to complete task 7 and task 8. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions of staff? Is there any concern with regard to um, KDHE and EPA compliance with regard to ha not having these tasks completed in the calendar year that they were supposed to be completed in? No, we're, we're in compliance with them and, and that should stay uh, in accordance with that. Other questions of staff? Are there any public comments? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for action. Mayor Morris, I move that we approve an ex the extension of the 2006-07 Landfill Professional Engineering Services contract with Camp Dresser McKee, Inc., and that it will go now till September 30th of 2007. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve this extension of the Camp Dresser McKee contract for the 2006-2007 annual Landfill Professional Engineering Service contract. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next item. Item 8.5, resolution number 076379, authorizing the 2007-2008 Landfill Professional Engineering Services contract with Camp Dresser and McKee Incorporated. Staff report, Mr. Frazier. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, this is the new 2007-08 uh, contract with CDM for engineering services. Services that we have required in the past to be a part of the professional engineering services contract have included the preparation of the semi-annual groundwater monitoring reports, the preparation of the annual closure cost calculations, preparation of the annual air quality compliance reports, and miscellaneous services. In the 0708 contract, there will be four new areas of responsibility added to the contract to address KDHE requirements. These would include preparation and submitting of the air emission source class one operation permit. This is required every five years. Preparation and submittal of the Bureau of Water, um, a storm water pollution prevention plan. This is required every five years. Uh, providing operational plan update as required by KDHE. We're not real sure if that's necessary this next year, but our consultant feels that they want to put some funds in the, uh, in the uh, contract to be able to cover that in the event of uh, any requests from uh, KDHE. And uh, monitor well installation, which will provide funds to act upon decisions made as a result of the current geoprobe groundwater investigation that is currently underway at the landfill. 
The groundwater investigation began last <coughs> summer and is continuing at the request of KDHE in order to obtain additional information. This investigation should be completed and reviewed by KDHE in the next few months. This task only covers the analysis and reporting expenses. Drilling expenses will be charged directly to the city. Um, we expect uh, that uh, there will be somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, possibly um, three, maybe four clusters of wells. Each one of those clusters goes for probably about three to four thousand dollars. So there could be some additional cost that's going to be, well, there will be additional cost incurred to be able to pay for the actual drilling. Uh, we didn't include it as a part of this contract because we didn't want to incur the overhead from CDM. So the direct, uh, the direct billing to us will save the city some money to be able to do that. But just a point of clarification on that. Uh, this agreement has been submitted by our landfill consultant, CDM, and addresses above required services. The contract time period is from March uh, 31st, 2007 uh, through March 31st, 08. Payment to CDM um, will be based upon the actual cost incurred by CDM to provide the engineering services specified in each of the eight separate tasks. As identified in Exhibit A, uh, in the attached agreement or in the, um, in the, uh, the agreement uh, as, as requested by the city, the total compensation, however, shall not exceed $65,500. Uh, we have reviewed the um, agreement and the fees seem appropriate uh, for the compensation uh, required. Sufficient funds are available within the 07 solid waste budget to pay for these expenses. <clears throat> Staff recommends the City Commission approve the attached agreement authorizing CDM to perform certain annual landfill engineering services in the amount not to exceed $65,500. Be happy to answer any questions. Questions of staff? I have one on this. Um in the previous uh, action where we extended the uh, solid waste composting consulting, that's strictly a feasibility study. There's no continuation of that study in this next contract. So what happens if, if we, we find composting to be feasible with one of the options that CDM gives us? Will we automatically give them another contract? Does it come up as a whole new situation on final design and following through on that compost center. Well, you're correct. Is that the uh, current contract the extension that we have with CDM provides a, a report on composting options. The first section of that is the feasibility study. Uh, but that only call, it only uh, covers the, uh, the feasibility study and the different options that the city could take. Any costs that we would incur to develop a site would be up and beyond what we've already approved at this time. Okay, and that'll be a completely separate contract from that's the correct. one that's up for current consideration. Okay. That's correct. Other questions of staff? Somebody else asked this question a couple years back, but I want to ask it again. Uh, who else does this kind of work? There are other companies within the, uh, the state of Kansas that, that does do these solid waste services. Really? I mean, we've been with this particular company for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. um, but when's the last, have we ever even, um, obviously, uh, to my knowledge, everybody's happy with their work, but mm -hmm. um, are there other companies that do this for, it seems like, the way uh, EPA and KDHE keep asking for more and more reports, uh, companies like this are kind of on a gravy train. <laughs> Is that accurate or how often do we look at who we're doing this work with? Well, I could say is that since uh, I've been here the last nine years is that uh, uh, we have worked with the same consulting uh, agency. We've not really gone out and tried to uh, solicit proposals from other companies for these services. I think as far as our landfill services are concerned, we're very satisfied with the work that CD CDM has done for us in those areas. Uh, we have had some, some conversations with CDM concerning the composting report, um, but as far as the landfill aspect uh, of their, their services, I think all of those, uh, those services have been done quite well. Mm -hmm. And to our satisfaction. Commissioner, just a thought. I think that uh, the level of work we've had from CDM with the landfill has been why we've stayed with them for so long. Um, these are pretty timely, but uh, the thought being is, is if you would, uh, 
it, it doesn't always hurt if there are other providers that can provide the quality services that you're looking for to go out and ask the question every once in a while and do a, maybe a qualification-based selection process to, to take a look at them. Again, doesn't mean that CDM would or wouldn't get it, uh, uh, get this work in the future, but at least we could, uh, you know, would have a fresh look at everyone. If you'd like to be on these for us to take a look at possibly doing that, uh, let us know. We'd be happy to, to take a look at that if you think it might be worthwhile to just simply see who else is out there that are qualified to do this uh, type of technical work and can provide it here in Salina. And I see those as, as uh, because they're ongoing work, I see that process where you would do an indefinite delivery contract for a period of years instead of maybe just one. And you have a... Uh, and then you go through a process after you that. You go through a process mm -hmm. after that. To me, that mm -hmm. puts this type of service on a, on a better ground, and I agree with Commissioner Jolka. We don't really know what's out there, Not, nothing against the work that they've done, but that seems to be a typical process when you have a service that's done over and over again. We, we have invested a significant amount of money in their knowledge base of our mm -hmm. landfill. And there's some value there. And uh, we don't necessarily want to pay for someone, pay to teach someone else the knowledge that they have gained that we have paid for. But uh, we do, I think, in uh, being good stewards of the tax dollars we deal with, I think that's that would be an appropriate approach to do at some point in time. Well, and as you know, you know, well, the first thing we do look at would be the qualifications, so we make sure that uh, the work level is adequate. But after that, then, when you do have a process like that, it does tend to uh, make sure the pencils are fairly sharp. That's, that's uh, an objective we want to have as well, even though with professional services, it's usually the second priority, not the first, but it is, a, it's, it is one of the priorities. So we'd be happy to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it, it makes sense with the timing of these if we can move forward with these, but uh, certainly we could go through that process and be ready for the future and try to package up, my, whether it be three years or five years or how long we think it makes sense to invest in, whether it be still CDM or another company after going through that process. It's important that we should point out that what we have is a qualification-based selection process. Correct. It's not a fee-based selection process. It's based on qualifications, first and foremost. So even though you go out and ask for qualifications, you're not comparing dollars at that point in time. You're comparing qualifications. Right. And the, the other, and the reason for that, as you know, is that uh, certainly some of this is fairly complicated and uh, when it has environmental significance we want to make sure it's right that's the the, the most important thing so, and some of this type of work also leads to other work so not all of it is, is fully packaged up some of it is it's it's occurs every so many years we know we need to do that but certainly if you depending on what you find with some of this you uh, it takes you into other work too so um, some of that's a little bit open-ended and you know it when you get to it but a good majority of it is is routine as far as being scheduled out in the future if we were comparing anything at all in here, it would be this exhibit, exhibit C, which, which uh, would be their hourly rates that they're charging because this is all done on an hourly basis. How do these compare with last year's hourly rates? There is some uh, a slight difference in that. Is that uh, in the 06-07, um, in the uh, they had uh, professional um, uh, number two for $100 uh, per hour and then when we look at the uh, the other rate is that um, there is now a professional three. So they've added a category in there and it looks like an additional person has come on board. Uh, but they have gone up to in senior support services uh, by about $5 an hour. Uh, staff support services have increased by about $5 an hour. So <laughs> slight, slight increase. So we're basically just keeping up with inflation if you want to deal with it on an hourly yes. basis. So thank you. Any other questions? Any public comments? Bring it back to the commission. Mayor Mars, I move approval of resolution 056379 authorizing the attached agreement with Camp Dresser and McKee to perform certain annual landfill engineering services in an amount not to exceed $65,500. Is that 076379? Oh, I'm sorry. 076. And I second that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Been moved and seconded to approve resolution 076379. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Next item. 
Item 8.6, Award of Contract for the 2007 Asphalt Major Maintenance Inlay Project Number 07-1621. Staff report, Mr. Place. Thank you again, Mayor and Commissioners. <coughs> the Milne Inlay Project is a major, major component of the uh, 2007 Street Repair Program. Uh, the attached map to your uh, packet shows four sections of arterial or collector streets. Uh, these are Santa Fe Avenue from Mulberry to Elm, uh, Iron Avenue from 9th to 4th, Crawford from Centennial to 9th, and Broadway uh, from the viaduct to Crawford Street. Uh, the bituminous mill and inlay is a pavement treatment used uh, not only to resurf resurface the pavement, uh, but also to in improve the pavement structure as well. Uh, this is done um, by including some wrap mix into the uh, into the asphalt wrap is recycled asphalt. Um, we use about a 25% mix, which helps in the stability, uh, especially in the intersections. Um, bids on this project were received on Tuesday, uh, March 20th, <coughs> and were as follows: APAC, Kansas, uh, 890,847 dollars and 70 cents; Lafarge, 1,191,467 cents. Our engineer's estimate was $1,139,534.20. Uh, the 2000 budget allocates $1 million from the special sales tax fund for the two 2007 mill and inlay project. Um, it, is it is the recommendation that the City Commission award the contract for the 2007 asphalt arterial major maintenance uh, project number 07-1621 to APAC Kansas Shears Division in the amount of $890,847.70. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Questions of staff? I know you probably can't answer this because you weren't here, but is this the same process done by the same company that did Front Street from um, Crawford going north to uh, around the Bicentennial Center? That's correct. That is correct. APEC, yes. Okay, has anybody taken a drive down that street? Yes, we've, um, if I could just comment on that, is that uh, we're very much aware of the problems in the number of locations around the city. As a matter of fact, the city engineer and our internal staff has had a, uh, a discussion on this, is that uh, we have a uh, gentleman from the Asphalt Institute that's gonna be coming out this week. Correct. We've set up a meeting uh, to be able to discuss our uh, design mix in our inspection processes and the time of year in which we do these types of work to see if we can come up with some answers of how to be able to correct this. But there's a number of locations that we have where we're not satisfied with the results. I believe that uh, the, you've gotten with, the, um, uh, with Ben to be able to go out and to um, uh, let uh, APAC know that we're gonna need to be able to, to fix those locations. They're under warranty. Many of these things really haven't even lasted six months. And so they're, we're aware of that. Yes, we are. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Prior to a couple of years ago, the, the slurry seal um, process was what was used predominantly on all of our asphalt streets in Salina. We weren't milling, portioning them up, and then putting it back down. Um, I haven't been real happy with the process, to be honest. Iron Street was another one, or not Iron, but 9th Street, uh, just north of Iron, was another place that had to be redone twice and it still isn't uh, doing very well. I get concerned about the fact that you, you have a section of pavement that's designed to do uh, handle the traffic that you put on it. When we, mill in, when we cut out part of it and then put it back down, it's like putting a Band-Aid over the top of what's left. And I see that the subgrade um, failures are what's causing a lot of the problems. That's what happened at, at uh, on North 9th. You could see that it you know, the subgrade totally failed because you got moisture through it at that point in time. Is this really the best way to handle our asphalt street maintenance? I, I would uh, say that we have been investigating what type of mix that we use. Uh, there are some um, problems associated with that. It's uh, with the curb and gutters that are on, on the, the streets that we're doing, it's designed to, to shed all the water off the street and into the curbs, which is supposed to be where it's draining. Uh, with the mix that we're using, there is some um, infiltration into the into the asphalt itself, and then when it gets out to the curb, 
it's already lower, so it, it's it's kind of on, and, and and that's where a lot of the issues are coming. That's why we've done some research into um, changing what our our mix is. We've contacted uh, Jim Jones with Kansas Asphalt Paving Association. He's he's coming this week, um, trying to do what we can to um, get rid of the defects that we're getting out of our our. Um, when we when we inlay these projects, but there are there are several factors involved, whether it be um, we looked at several different options, whether it could be you know weather, uh, time of year this stuff's going down. Uh, that's one reason why we're we're trying to get at it earlier um, because of the the temperatures that that ideally when this stuff goes down, um, location, traffic, uh, the amount of recycle uh, asphalt that goes back into the mix. Um, all these factors are things that, that we have uh, addressed and we're hoping to uh, get a much better idea uh, with this uh, meeting that we're having coming up. Well, if, if we awarded the contract today and then you change the mix, will there automatically then have to be a change order and uh, possible additional cost because of the change of mix? Possibly. Uh, there's some uh, actually um, what I've gathered from from this is um, we're actually using a better uh, oil than what's in our city specs right now uh, be, and that's another thing that we're looking at with uh, the Jim Jones from from CAPA is upgrading our specs so, uh, our asphalt specs right now are, are really kind of outdated the oil that we uh, spec is is difficult to get into it's actually more costly for them to get it, then it, it's a uh, not as good oil. Um, so they use they actually use a, a PG rated uh, oil uh, right now for the asphalt mixes. Is part of this contract the repair of the subsurface? Uh, I agree with the mayor that part of the problem is the underbase. It it needs to be in in really good shape in order to just do an o mill and overlay right. over it. Is, I, I is agree with you, but that is not part of it. So that gets done prior to any milling and overlay, or who who does the repairs? The repair, um, maybe I'm misunderstanding. Of the of the under of the subgrade of the uh, subgrade. We're not, we're not getting down that far. We're milling off an inch and a half. Okay, and and then you have the old, oftentimes concrete, surface, mm -hmm. and that's where some of the problems are coming from, I believe. Who, is there any repair work done prior to the milling or prior to the overlay? Uh, to to jump in and help you. Yes, thank you. If we've got a pothole situation. Uh, a pothole, In the street yeah. where you're milling, you, you do repair that before you begin yes. the mill work. Yes, yeah. yes. Commissioners, the, the expectation of the contractor is once they mill that to look at any deficiencies in that uh, that road structure that's that's a, uh, that you can tell to fix those uh, to do whatever you can to make sure the base is uh, adequate, and fully stabilized. If that's an issue, and it can be from spot to spot, occasionally make sure that we address uh, whatever it takes to hopefully eliminate any reflective cracking uh, beyond what we would normally expect. Um, I. As Carlton mentioned, there are a lot of aspects that go into uh, mill and overlay and asphalt work from application to the time of year and current weather conditions um, to the mixture, uh, the oil, and all of that that we need to look at. I guess with that in mind, going back to the question of the existing road work and, and uh, uh, where we go with that, I think we need to, we're not quite far enough along to be able to give you great detail as to specifically what we would believe the causes are and the locations we talked about and possibly other locations we're looking at. We're going to do that as soon as we have all the answers to those questions and it, uh, we're in the middle of that right now. I don't think that'll take a, a tremendous uh, amount of more time to do that. Um, that's real important to us. It's also important to make sure when we do this that our specs are to the level that we think they need to be and that the, uh, the workmanship is also insure, assured to be to the level that we expect it to be so that if we do put money into this project that we don't expect to turn around and have issues with it and, uh, in just a few uh, months. Uh, and I, with that, I need to ask our city engineer a quick question is when we talk about the spec issues, Carlton, is it the intent to have any change that we believe is necessary in the specs actually addressed prior to implementing this contract? And if so, 
does it uh, does it uh, does it indicate that possibly we need to start again or do we play off of a potential change order from those changes on this contract uh, my thought right now is it would depend on what comes back from um, or when we speak with Jim Jones from CAPA, what his recommendations were, we're meeting with him. We're also meeting with the local contractors to, to get their input. Um, and then depending on, on what those uh, changes are, I do think there's a lot of things that, that where the deficiencies have happened uh, very recently has been um, some factors outside of what the actual mix is. Um, but you know, if if we can upgrade our oil, if we can upgrade our aggregates um, to something that's going to perform better. Let, let me ask this: it, First of all, do we believe that we'll have those answers fairly quickly regarding uh, at least our specifications? I don't think it'll take very long for them to turn that around. Okay. Yeah. So then, the the next question is: Is do we believe it's more cost effective to wait, ensure the specifications are to exactly what we want them to be, rebid, to see what bid we get? versus to go in with these specifications in which we're sort of locking into an agreement here with the thought that if we want to change that, we're going to be subject to a change order, which may very well be a higher unit, may end up uh, becoming a higher unit cost rather than if we started with the specs where we would like them to be. What's your thought on the, the cost comparison of those two options? Um, again, there's there's a lot of variables. Like I said, the the oil that we have specced um, is not being used. They're actually using a, a improved uh, a PG rated oil. So that's already included in this cost that we get. I would assume that that, that sort of um, oil would be, be the same that what comes back. One thing that um, I, I would guess will probably be different is the aggregates that are used uh, from a, a uh, whether it be a BM1, BM2, whatever it, it ends up being. Um, what, what kind of And I can't give you a price would, difference. Would no, mm -hmm. I meant to look that up. And I what kind of a bid guarantee period of time do you have on your bids? Are they guaranteed for 30 days? You're, you received the bids on March 20th? Yes. Do you, have a, do you have a guarantee time that they have to guarantee that price? Uh, I can't answer that. I would venture to say I, that you do. I, I would sure that we do. I, I would venture to say it's typically normally 30 days. You have they they offer a bid, and it's guaranteed for a period of time. We had to check and see what our bid guarantee time is. That would give us the time to work through some of these other issues, possibly as well. If you have to get unit price differences, you could get those before we enter into the contract and see where we're at, so we know whether or not it's something we would want to rebid. Sure. Um, if it if it exceeded our budget or exceeded what the other the other numbers were, we obviously with these two bidders, um, it would appear that we got a good good number from Apex. Yes. But we need to. Uh, I think if we could uh, postpone this until um, at least until next week mm -hmm. meeting, and then we can decide then if it needs to be postponed further. You can check out your bid guarantee period of time, and you can check out what may happen on the spec issue or even do two weeks. It doesn't matter to me. What, what's your thought? Yeah, I was going to refer that to Carlton. Carlton, if we if we postpone this either one or two weeks, does that uh, give you adequate time to maybe answer some of those questions to sort of figure out whether the uh, rebidding would actually be a better option based on what could be uh, revised specs? I think so. I think two-week period. Two we weeks? Have it. Yep. Okay. okay. Other questions? The one other question I had was about the timing in this contract for the actual works in Santa Fe and uh, Mulberry and Santa Fe and Iron are going to have the, uh, the curbings replaced in as part of the uh, traffic signal installation. Is there enough? Do we have control over that? I mean, I'd hate to see us have the thing uh, repaved right up to the old curbs and then tear them back out for three or four feet and then have a patch in there immediately. We've already talked about coordination with that. With that other contract? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So is there a motion to uh, postpone this item for two weeks? I would move that we postpone item 8.6, the 2007 asphalt arterial major maintenance project, 
for two weeks. Second. We moved and seconded that we postpone um, item 8.6 for two weeks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Is there any other business that needs to be brought before the commission today? No, Mayor. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. We moved and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, we're adjourned. Happy trails till Thursday.